Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all Gwent appropriate ages. Yes, I 100% stole that from Flake, but I just like the way it sounds. So what are we doing today? We've got patch 9.0 being released today. We've got the patch notes here. We have got the deck builder here. We're going to go take a quick look through some of the changes. I don't want to go into deep detail. There are still quite a few and I, uh, I hate when my patch videos are 45 minutes long. So we're going to try and make this a little bit shorter, a little bit more concise, but really touching on the important topics. If you enjoy this, please subscribe, like all that jazz down below. And if you want to see me playing with these cards, you can check me out twitch.tv slash the one Christo. Let's get that all out of the way and jump into the patch notes. So here we have patch 9.0. It's coming out at the same time as Once Upon a Pyre, the first part of the three-part expansion of Price of Power. I'm not going to talk about the expansion cards in this. That is a whole different ball game. And I know there are a lot of great streamers and content creators out here who have uh, done review video so i want to let them go ahead and, and shine and do their thing we're going to do something different and just talk about the patch notes now we're not just going to talk about the cards we're going to talk about the patch notes as a whole because there are some fun things in here first things first something widely requested being able to change the play card you're able to change the play card on your um on your screen so if i check this out let's flip back over I've got Reens, Reens, I'm terrible with pronunciations, but I've got that set as my play card right now. It's super nifty because if you highlight over it, you get the premiums. Um, so really cool that you get to pick your favorite card and throw it up there and then rotate through them, right? There's so much great art in Gwent. Getting to enjoy it a little bit more often is fantastic. So let's keep rolling now. Um, first of all, we've got a Northern Realms rework, which is really neat. Um, we talked about charges a lot, right? How... Um, not mobilization i'm blanking on the name i'm literally going to scroll down to it stockpile stockpile would allow you to stockpile charges which um at the end of the day was not all that great so i'm um, moving away from that and moving back to the cooldown mechanic which i think is really interesting and gives a little bit more diversity so we'll talk about that in a moment let's skip through some of the other quick things unranked mode got moved don't, don't really care that much now the next thing that i think is really important to me is the gameplay speed has been improved by decoupling logic and visuals now i haven't jumped into the game just yet but what i think that means is the fact that now you can go ahead and play your next action while you're waiting for that first action to resolve the animations to resolve because that's been one of my frustrating my frustration points with Gwent is that some other card games allow you to do that. So you can chain two or three actions. The problem with Gwent is because you can't, you go and click something while that's uh, resolving, you click something else and you can end up botching things and, and screwing up your, your sequence of play by doing that. So I'm really excited for this and see how it plays out. But uh, based on some things I've seen online, it looks super smooth. Now let's jump into the cards. First couple, I'm not going to talk too, too much about because I don't think they're super, well, they are important in the sense that all of our weather conditions are now getting moved down to four provisions. So rain, frost, fog, all moving down to four. Now we have the Avalok Sage. So that is uh, what plays an artifact from your deck. Power change from one to two, provision change from 11 to 10, saw no play. May or may not see play now, TBD um but avalok is the main one right because avalok allows you to spawn and play biting frost fog or rain changing of provisions changing of power here to uh, sorry just power from four to six so getting an extra two points along with making the um weather effects cheaper hopefully that means that what you're able to actually do is go ahead and um, play more weather. We're going to see that as well tie into the Skilliga cards as uh, as Rage of the Sea is going to get a little bit of a buff and you're going to see more on that side of things. So um, Vader Vader Makar. God, my pronunciations are awful. My apologies in advance. This one's super cool. Uh, this one's super cool. So we're going to be increasing all row effect duration by one or decreasing by one. But if you control the Scepter of Storms, which we see right here, you're going to increase or decrease duration by three instead, which is going to be absolutely huge, especially if you're playing something like Rage of the Sea, where you can go ahead and quickly, through a leader ability and not another card, put weather down. You can drop something like this and boost tremendously on both rows. Obviously, if you're playing Scepter of Storms, that's going to allow you to put weather out as well. So you get a little bit more variety in how you go about doing it. But this at the end is pretty huge because one is one thing, but three is going to be money. And the Scepter of Storms changed, provision dropping from six to five. It is an artifact. So we saw Avalok before being able to pull artifacts. Could, could pull a Scepter of Storms for you. Could pull a scenario, could pull all kinds of different things. 
Um, a few little things, little changes that were made. So we have Francis Bedlam, they added a bandit category. Vigo's Muzzle adding a spell category. A little bit of a boost to some of the warfare stuff. So Commander's Horn is now warfare and provision dropped by one. Boosting five adjacent units by two is still a little bit iffy. Can kind of work in some swarm stuff. Maybe some uh, some commando decks, but probably still not a huge amount of, uh, of play there. Uh, Marigold's Hailstorm gets dropped from nine to eight. Literally the opposite of Commander's Horn. So boosting both at the same time only makes sense. Jermaine turns into a little bit of an engine. We're talking about cooldown on the Northern Realm side. So this is kind of the first sort of dive into it because the order spawn a cow with a cooldown three was added. So not only do you get the cows on both sides, but now you get to spawn additional cows with your order ability. Maybe drop a commander's horn on there. Uh, cows go to war two um, and, and you can get a little bit of a, a boost that way. Jumping back to the notes, we're going to get into monsters now. So ghouls consume, right? Bronzes, uh, provision change drop, power change drop in theory shouldn't make a huge difference uh, because they kind of offset, but it gives you the flexibility to fit it into more lists. Speaking of flexibility, that next card, that Indrega Larva, that is probably one of the most played cards in Monsters. Probably one of the best bronze cards in the game, and I actually really, really like this change. I've been talking to a few people about it, trying to wrap my head around, because some people think it's a buff and some people think it's a nerf. First off, you get to avoid things like having Delirium hit you, right? Because they are no longer simply six points on the board. So Delirium on a row can't wipe them out. But then being six provisions means you're not just jamming them into every deck. We would occasionally see them in Vi decks. You would see them in other monster lists as well. This is going to make them stronger for Thrive and probably a little bit less good for the other deck archetypes, which again, I like that because I feel like that's a smart way to nerf or to change a card, right? Uh, make it fit a little bit more into what you expect it to or what you want it to be in versus, um, you know, just dropping it into every type of archetype, making the, the different decks a little bit more self-contained, which I like because it allows for more flexibility. You don't see the same very strong or overpowered cards in all the different um, in all the different lists. So again, I like that quite a bit. If we hop back, um, we've got some changes to all the crones. Before we do, though, I want to highlight something quickly. I want to highlight the fact that larva boosts play into um, thrive boosts, which Fruits of Isgith now gets one additional provision. So we're moving from 11 to 12 provisions in the list. Now, the fun part about this is a larva now immediately proc the fruit. So play the fruit first, drop the larva. They boost the fruit. Fantastic, right? Great news. Secondly, Koshche. Oh boy, Koshche. Koshche now spits out two point larvas. That is huge. Um, so that's, that's going to be something I'm toying around with because I think that's super, super interesting. So I'm, I'm excited to see that. So now we've got our crones. We've got our three lovely crones all next to each other. So the main change here, power changes from five to six for all of them. So they're getting a little bit of a buff. That puts them in a very good spot to not need a lot of extras to be able to uh, to be worth their provisions. So for example, Weave's uh, boost an alley unit by two, puts that as an eight for seven right away. Uh, Bruis is the change that was made. So now Bruis consumes a unit as an order can be played proactively has a charge and every crone adds another charge. So it's less forcing you to drop in um, your card after you've played the other ones, get all your consumes. This you can play it proactively, uh, drop one of either Wispus or your Weavis and you're in good shape. We talked about fruits being changed. We've got something interesting with the Kran here. So Kran ability now immune. So that's huge, right? Because Kran's issue in the past was A, you lock it because you've got your three charges and if you lock it after it uses one or two you're kind of in this shitty situation so you have to drop it and consume right away that means you're now putting all of your eggs in one k ran basket if you're doing things with ruin or or detlaf or whatever the case may be now you don't do that on deploy you have to consume all three units so that means you can't use it in conjunction with detlaf and consume it once wait next turn consume it again etc you're gonna have to do it all at once however all those points are now protected under immunity also great for the new Sabbath um, keyword they released, 
in the expansion so you can really put all your points together get that Karen nice and tall and avoid a lot of things Curse of Corruption still a problem Igni still a problem Irritant still a problem because they do not target the unit keep that in mind but a little bit safer now in the general scheme of things Penitent got a little bit of a tweak as well so the Penitent now summons a random cost 7 unit from your deck to that row specifically and not just get thrown out onto the board that was a problem in the past because um what happens is you know you end up pulling out the uh the phantom and the phantom goes on the wrong row things like that so this cleans things up a little bit same thing if you're pulling a werecat for example let's jump down to skellige rage of the sea provision change from 13 to 14 you get one extra provision rage of the sea was one of those things that got nerfed when warriors was really strong and that was their leader of choice it felt a little unfair that that took the brunt of it when maybe you could have tweaked some warrior cards so it's nice to see them getting the provision back this is obviously going to play really really closely with all of the um the weather cards that skill is getting in the new expansion Mardrum going from five to four not a big deal uh sigrif is right nine to um eight which again, you're tweaking the alchemy cards here, making that alchemy, maybe alchemy slash rage of the sea type of lineup a little bit more playable. A few changes to adding keywords to bear abomination, Hammond, armored uh, Drakkar from five to four. Iced, iced is the big one here. Iced is going from 11 to 12 provisions. Um, not OP, the discussion was, it's not crazy over the top powerful, but needs a little bit of a tweak because it's still a very swingy play all at once. That gets you um you know a ton of points if you've got a big target on the other side iced without even activating the other ability with blaze can be you know 30 points so uh nice to see the little change in the provisions here uh, i think that makes a whole lot of sense it is now time for northern realms so the main change for northern realms ties around stockpile stockpile now reduces the cooldown of three adjacent units by one and spawns a volunteer does that three times so in reality you can reduce cooldown nine times and you pop out six volunteers sorry six points worth of volunteers three volunteers so now you're talking about that I'm trying to do the math and figure out how strong an ability that is it's not straight up points like you can count in other um, in other abilities, but I do think with the cooldown mechanic and the way they've engineered it, this is going to be very interesting. They've also changed the provisions, dropped it from 17 to 15. It was one of the weakest abilities and barely playable. So um, it's nice to see them make that change for provisions as well to give you a bit more flexibility. Now, the cards that they are going to offer you to uh, boost it or to, to use that cooldown effect. So Priscilla now, you know, we had Priscilla, Dandelion, um, those, those kind of boosting each other for all the charges gained. Now this has completely changed. They did not take charges out of the game by any means. They didn't even take all of the charges out of Northern Realms. Visigoda still has it. You've got things like Hefty Helga and a few Nilfgaard cards that have it. Like charges are not going away. They're just changing a bit of the archetype to focus on cooldown. So something like Priscilla here heals and resets the cooldown on a unit now there are a few units that have some big bad cooldown so it's going to be nice to see priscilla go and boost some of those units if she's inspired she actually boosts the unit instead of healing so you're going to want priscilla to be given a little bit of love inspire her um so that she can reset something and what is she going to reset we will show you a little bit later on We've got Dandelion, boost unit in your deck by two. Um, at the end of your turn, boost the top unit of your deck by one. So cool down to, that's if you're inspired. That's a potential to have a nice engine. Now, the problem with Dandelion at this point is it needs to survive a turn. Six six points is, um, or six strength is a little bit more difficult to remove. So it's not happening instantaneously. Uh, six usually needs a little bit of work unless you're dropping a Parasite or a Horse Sun on it. So the thing is, it plays for six for nine. After the first turn, you can then boost a unit by two and uh, cool down two to do it again. However, it also becomes an engine if it's inspired. So inspiration is, insp I guess I can say inspiration, right? Having your units be inspired is gonna be really, really big. So things like drummers and Anna and all of that are going to come in really handy because Dandelion will boost the top unit of your deck by one. The crazy thing about it, and I'm curious to see how this is going to work, the first time around it's going to boost a unit by one but you're going to look at your deck and see which unit was boosted by one meaning you know which card is on top of your deck 
don't know if it's intentional or not, but it's something you can absolutely do. So if you track that well, you're going to know which cards are on top of your deck. Something interesting you may want to do is something like Priscilla Dandelion and all that to make sure that they are inspired. What you can do is drop an Erland early in the game and that'll boost everything in your deck. It's a lot of provisions doesn't exactly fit in the archetype, but it's just a quick idea that it came up with to say, hey, these are going to come out inspired and are going to start working pretty much right away. So the um, damn sorceresses are going to get a boost in the way of a cooldown here so you can continuously eat those shields. The uh, reinforced ballista. So the reinforced ballista didn't see a ton of play going to be boosting siege, the siege scenario just a little bit, which I think is really, really cool. So formation damage unit by one with a cooldown of one and resupply is going to reduce that cooldown by one. Meaning if you play a warfare card, you drop a boiling oil or you go get a winch, which we're going to talk about in a moment, you're going to go ahead and increase, uh, decrease that cooldown and allow you to do more ping damage. So I think that's going to be interesting because we're going to start to see a lot of that ping damage come in handy from the Northern Realm side of things, especially when we're talking about cooldown, siege, stuff like that. Hubert, good old Hube. Um, so whenever an order ability is used, remove a counter from it. When the counter reaches zero, summon this card from your deck to your range. Bro, now he's a power five card playing 10 orders. When you've got cooldown going though, all of a sudden those, it's not playing 10 cards with order. It's using the orders multiple times. So some of these orders have cooldown one, something like the ballista, um, cooldown one, but resupply, you can be using that multiple times. So this is going to be, um, a thinning card that's going to pop out of your deck. I don't think it's impossible to use. The challenge is I still think 10 cooldowns going to be a lot and may only be seen later in the game, which may encourage the opportunity for you to brick it, uh, which wouldn't feel so great. So just let me keep in mind. I'm curious to see how often these orders are going to be used. Winch or provisions boost an allied unit by five already feels good. Reduce the cooldown by three. Again, that cooldown by three is going to be looking at some of those cards that are going to have those higher cooldowns. Now, there's not a ton of them, but we're getting to one that I'm really excited about. So Winch will play nicely into that um, that list. Sintrian Envoy, look at the top three cards of your deck, move one to the top, cooldown two, pretty nifty. Um, only if you're pulling stuff though, unless I'm missing something here, once you do that once, you're pretty satisfied with what's on top of your deck and the cooldown of two is gonna be weird unless you're playing against Cloggers or something. Um, because Otherwise, you're going to constantly be moving them to the top of the deck. So a little thrown off, maybe uh, targeting this with Dandelion. I don't I don't fully understand this and I don't know how good it's going to be. Maybe I'm wrong. Somebody can prove me otherwise. I'm all ears for it. Drop it in the comments below if you think you know better than me. And that's not too hard. I believe that you probably can. Full Tests Pride. Now, here is the money maker. This guy is your finisher. This is the one you're going to want in your cooldown list, in your stockpile list. Damage an enemy unit by two and the units adjacent by one. That's four damage in a turn. It's got zeal. So the second you drop it, given your opponent has the right situation on the board that is playing for a nine for eight with one armor. So it's slightly more difficult to remove. Cooldown is four, but with crew, it sets the cooldown to two. So crewing this thing is going to be money. That means you're doing four damage every two turns. You drop something like a winch on it. And all of a sudden that cooldown is down to one. You've got the ability here to really do a lot of work with this thing. This thing is money. So uh, keep an eye out for full test pride. It's going to get nasty. Um, a few other things also got to change. Most of what we're going to be talking about today is going to be Northern Realm. So no surprise here. We've got Spellweaver. Um, so damage unit by one, charge one. Uh, gain a charge whenever you play a mage or a spell. They basically just added spell to it, trying to make those mages feel a little bit more all-encompassing because you've got the option, obviously, of a mage playing a spell, and that makes perfect sense to me. Um, the Aratusa Adept got a rework to tie into the Patience uh, card. So whenever allied unit Patience is triggered, boost self by one. Kind of interesting. Starts at a 4-4 four, four and becomes an engine. So um, if you're playing a Patience list, it could be good. I don't know that we've seen enough Patience cards yet. I wonder if throughout the rest of the expansions, the rest of Price of Power being released, if we're going to see more Patience cards and maybe a Patience archetype, and this will make more sense. Patience and cooldown are kind of similar in certain ways. Obviously, cooldown is for typically like more of an order ability. Patience will improve an ability you're using. So keeping in mind that 
if charges become an archetype, maybe patience becomes one. Maybe we see another leader rework that ties into patience. So um, it's going to be interesting. Shawnee, something I like. Look at this. Zeal, order. Summon a bronze human unit from your graveyard. Give it doomed. Cooldown seven. We were talking before about how important Inspire is. Um, having certain one, certain of your, your units buffed to be able to provide the most boost possible. Shani's going to be able to get your drummers back out uh, to continue to boost your bodies or some of your other engines. Uh, even some of your siege engines, if you're playing siege and you want to go ahead. I lied. You can't get a siege engine out. It says human only. So, you know, looking at those drummers to continue to inspire people. But that seven cooldown, once again, is going to tie very nicely into some of these cards that reduce that cooldown by a whole heck of a lot. Got Thaler here as well. So Thaler is going to go ahead and um, has formation. So can uh, have Zeal on the front row. Neither player's pass and your opponent's hand is not full. Both players draw a card. So again, we were talking a little bit earlier about the, um, it wasn't the Adept. It was another mage. It was the Envoy. So the Envoy can look at the top three cards from your deck, move one to the top, play Thaler, draw that card, go ahead and do it again. So it makes that cooldown option feel a little bit better um still a bit awkward to play but i think with certain combinations it can definitely be worthwhile siege sport got a rework very basic one uh, reduces a uh, cooldown by one instead of giving a charge so i think that makes a whole lot of sense based on the direction they're giving the battering ram the battering ram can now continuously ram over and over and over don't be nasty um, so the battering ram now has a cooldown of two, moves it to the back row, moves it back to the front row. I like the concept. It's still very slow. You deploy it. Let's say you have crew and you give it the zeal. You move it to the melee row and damage the highest unit by three. You now wait two turns. You move it back to the back. You now wait two more turns. You move it back to the front. So, um, you're not getting this battering ram off more than a couple times. I guess based on like lore, if you want to call it that, like looking at these guys, work their butts off to move that battering ram it's a heavy mofo um so i kind of understand the concept of it being a little bit slow but you know better than the alternative of not having that cooldown at all you also have some movement abilities that can move things around so something else to keep in mind war elephant big bad war elephant now it's cooldown six those big cooldown numbers are super fun to have because you can play into that but boosting by 16 Make that a 24 power war elephant by waiting six turns. Super cool. Playing something like a winch on it. Man, it, will that ever be a removal target? But the opportunity to be greedy is real. Uh, I wonder how much tall punish is going to come out once some of these cards start hitting because um, it's going to be nasty otherwise. So um, you're going to get the ability to do a lot of uh, a lot of crazy things with it. Vess gets um a new cooldown so you can uh you can now damage by two over and over again still given an allied unit zeal so you've got the opportunity to do that damage regularly um bombardment provisions five to four sheila goes from seven to six so just a little again some extra tools kind of supporting some of those archetypes rune word let's let's talk about rune word quickly i think it's important it's moved from a four to a six it's going to tie in with one of the new patience cards in Price of Power, whose name is escaping me. But create and play a Bronze Rel Northern Realms Mage and give it a shield. Uh, pretty nifty to be able to create a mage and further support that mage archetype. We're done with Northern Realms. I know it was a lot to take in, but we are almost there, friends. So um, basically, that was the big chunk of this, that change in Northern Realms with your cooldowns and all of that. Everything else just kind of got a few little tweaks to align it, I think, a little bit better with Price of Power, a few little buffs and nerfs here and there. Squaytel has one major change. I feel a bit bad about it because I really like the Sage card. The Sage is now an Elven Scribe. Um, I'll, I'll bring it up here since it's, it's the pretty much the only one we're going to talk about in Squaytel. The Elven Scribe now removes a counter whenever you play a special card. The counters are three, boost self by six. Previously, the Sage boosted itself by two for every um, special card you played. So it comes to the same thing. You just have to wait three turns for it to happen. And so it stays at four points at four strength and it's easy to remove for three turns, which feels a bit bad. This feels like quite the nerf to me. Uh, maybe you're playing it off of council or something that makes it feel a little bit better. Uh, I don't know that I love this, but again, with some of the expansion cards coming out and really pushing um, 
Squaytail to continue to play spells. I can kind of understand where they're coming from there. So we'll have to see that in practice. Farseer is now a mage um, and the boost has changed from two to three. Not a lot of play, probably still won't be a lot of play. I like this change to Nilfgaard. Imposter. Ability is now changed to lock an enemy unit and spawn a base copy in the opposite row. Nothing has changed there. But instead of boosting it by two, you're now boosting it by the number of enemy units with the status on the locked units row. I believe it counts itself as a locked unit as a status on that row. The second thing, and my first initial reaction was, well, that's fine. Your opponent, you know, maybe doesn't play other units on that row or limits how they're spread out, things like that. But then I realized Nilfgaard is playing spies all day long. So you jam a couple spies, you drop Roddy, you drop an emissary, you drop that kind of stuff all on that row. And you're the one giving yourself that bonus. So no harm done there. Uh, that feels pretty darn good. Courier gets a little change. Viper Witcher Adept gets a little change. Um, some small provision provision changes and power changes there. Magni Division, I do like this extra bonded ability. I know Magnis aren't used as much as they used to be, but there was always something terrible about getting a Magni in round three and like dropping a Yoakim and pulling a second Magni. Very annoying. But in this scenario, you actually would still get the boost. So that's kind of fun. I like that. Fringilla um, also counts as constructs instead of just mages. So a nice little tweak there. Not that there are that many constructs going on. I'm like actually curious. I'm gonna check in the deck builder right now while we're talking about it. Yeah, there are not a lot of constructs. The thing that is interesting is the fact that the Guardian, I'm pulling it up here though I shouldn't be. The Guardian is a construct and with some of the new mage cards like Blightmaker, pulling the Guardian. So um, some little bit of synergy there. I still don't know if she'll see much play, but I do like the synergy. And Henrietta is now row locked to the ra the ranged row, which I think is actually really, really smart. The de developer comment makes perfect sense. This way you have a choice of whether you want the action to happen or not. Because in the past you pull Anna with, again, Yoa Kim or something like that. You're stuck. It's a bit of a brick. And now you have to play, you lose your leader ability, even if you haven't fully used it. This makes her a little bit more flexible. Last one, Syndicate. Jackpot has a new part of the ability. Whenever an allied unit gives you coins, boost it by any excess amount gained. We can now over profit comfortably within reason. Um, so Jackpot will max at nine, but then if you go and get more coins, what happens? Your unit gets bu uh, buffed by that amount. So I actually really like this. Um, it, it, it makes for a little bit of a better starter ability, I think as well for Syndicate, because you're not as heartbroken when you over profit. Um, I like this a lot though. Curious to see if it's going to see play um, because it kind of goes against sort of the mindset of what you want with Syndicate where you need to manage those coins very carefully. But uh, I'm very curious to see how this plays out. Best Floor Peaches drops from five to two. Professor gets a little bit of a nerf. That change in ability was pretty nasty. So I I'm really happy to see that, that change here. That covers it. That covers the cards. How do we do? Like under half an hour? Pretty stellar here. We'll quickly run through a few of the new features. Not that much matters, but new uh, reward trees, new trees in the reward book. Sorry for the expansion. Kind of nice. Um, and then a few little tweaks down here of a few little things that are changing um, because there were little visual issues, stuff like that. Saskia's poor Elven Deadeye, even though they buffed Saskia, the poor Elven Deadeye can't hit immune targets. Boo. Coral is fixed. Coral was a problem before. Um, but now Coral is fixed. So that's kind of a nice note as well. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with me talking about patch nine. This is going to be super exciting patch 9.0. Sorry, super exciting with once upon a pyre coming out the first of the place of power, uh, the price of power. Sorry, I'm just falling all apart today. First of the price of power expansion. So check it out you can find me as always twitch.tv slash the one cristo i will be going live tonight testing this kind of stuff out and i will hopefully see you again soon in cristo's cafe oh what a lovely tea party